gender dysphoria is a common concern. Facial feminization surgery is mainly opted for by trans people who want their masculine facial appearance to change to a more feminine one. I am Dr. Shilpi Pradani. I am a plastic and aesthetic surgeon at SB Aesthetics Gurugram India. When we talk about the facial features of a male versus the facial features of a female, there are certain distinct differences that we find. I will start from the forehead. When we look at a mature male hairline versus a feminine hairline, we see that in the mature male hairline, we see a little bit of a temporal receding. Whereas a female hairline would be a more U-shaped hairline. Then we come to the forehead. In the male forehead, we see distinct frontal bossing and the brow ridge is very prominent, which in the female is much softer. When we look at the temples, in the females, the temples are fuller. The males may have a little hollowing around the temples. When we look at the cheekbones, for example, the females will have higher cheekbones and of course, more of the softer appearance with a little bit of facial fat more prominent in the females versus the males. Now we come to the nose, which is a very defining feature in a facial feminization uh, surgery. And in the female nose, we see that it's more of a straighter profile, not a very prominent hump. And in general, the tip is slightly more higher placed, the ella is more, uh, you know, narrow. And of course, in general, the female nose is slightly smaller and less prominent than a male nose. When we look at the cheeks, for example, a, a little bit of a hollowness around the cheeks, it does, it is desirable in the males as well as the females. But yes, it is a very important part of a facial feminization surgery. Now we come to a very important part in a facial feminization surgery, which is the jawline. And in this, we see that the male jawline, the chin will be mainly squarish, it's more broad, whereas the female chin is more of a pointed V kind of a chin. And when we look at the angles, then in the males, the angles are more wide and more squarish, whereas in the females, they are less flared. Even though more defined, the flare of the female angle is distinctively lesser than the male angle of the jaw. So having outlined the differences between a masculine facial appearance and a feminine facial appearance, now let's look at the procedures that can help us achieve a more feminine appearance. So when we look at the hairline, of course, hairline advancement can be done to shorten the forehead, to make the forehead looking more feminine. We can also burr down the bones, the bossing of the forehead that is present in a masculine face to give a more softer appearance. Forehead fat grafting can be resorted to so that a more softer appearance can be attained. Hair transplant is done to make the more mature male hairline turn into a feminine one and there we do the temporal hair grafts or hair transplant in the temporal areas. When we look at the nose, of course, reduction rhinoplasty mostly and there we take down the hump of the nose, we reduce the largeness of the tip to make it a more smaller tip, then we reduce the flare of the ella as well. We also do osteotomy so that the breadth of the nose is narrowed down. Then we look at the cheeks. So cheek fat grafting is a very good option to turn a male looking cheek to a feminine one, but we can also do malar implant so that the cheekbones can appear elevated. In some cases, we also do zygoma reduction, so the width of the face can also be narrowed down. Of course, in all this area, facial fat grafting is a very important step where we do a little finishing of the entire procedure and it gives a more softer appearance to the face that we are creating. Now, when we look at the lower half, of course, buccal fat reduction is a very good surgery to achieve a little narrowness of the cheeks over here. But the real change between a masculine looking face to a feminine one comes from the V-line osteotomy. I've talked about V-line osteotomy in my other video also. You can take a look at that. You will get the link in the description box below. And when we are talking about V-line osteotomy, so what is a V-line osteotomy? What we do is the flare of the angle here is reduced. So we really take off the extra bone that is there in the angle and make it a more feminine looking jaw. And in the chin, what we do is we take out a piece of the bone in between and narrow down the chin 
to a more pointed looking chin. So overall the entire jawline becomes a more feminine one from a masculine one. Of course, double chin, if it is there, then we can do a liposuction of the double chin area. We can even achieve a little bit of uh, narrowness of the neck by liposuction if there is fat deposit, of course. So overall, when we are looking at all these surgeries, even little changes in all of these areas can give us a stark difference between a male face and a female face. Now, of course, there are other procedures like a lip lift procedure. So, if the upper lip is very long, then we do achieve a shortening of the upper lip by a lip lift procedure. It is done by a bullhorn lip lift, which is where the scar is not visible. And actually, in all these surgeries, we make the scars as less as possible or not visible at all. Most of the jaw surgeries that I talked about, they are done from inside the mouth and you don't see a scar outside anywhere over here. Now again, when we talk about a young face, so uh, many times what happens that many trans people, they decide a little later in life that they really want to transition. And when we are talking about a feminine face which looks young and sculpted, even facelift can be an important part of a facial feminization surgery where we actually do an anti-gravity pull and we do an upward pull to the face and that makes the cheekbones more highlighted, the jaw more sharp and defined. Other procedures of course which can be done along with the forehead surgery is the brow lift which again makes us achieve a more open looking eye and we can also combine it with a blepharoplasty. So overall when we are talking about a change from the masculine appearance to a feminine appearance, all these surgeries can play their important roles. Of course, it is not possible to achieve everything in one go and what we advise is to separate them in stages because some people may need all of these or some people may need just some of these and we best decide it when we see them in a personal consult and then according to that we can make the algorithm as to how it can be achieved in as less stages as possible so that your recovery can be quicker. If you have questions regarding facial feminization surgery, do drop them in the comment box below or get in touch with us via the contact details given below. Thank you.